the difference between trying to grade a corrected image and a non-corrected one is pretty astonishing. Applying the same grade to the same shot with color correction applied to only one of them reveals just how much detail can be preserved just by taking the time to color correct an image. Hey what's up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome to part 2 of my anamorphic editing series where today we're going to be going over cinematic color correction. Color is one of the best ways to influence an audience. You can make them feel sad, happy, or nervous just based on the color tones in your film. Now not to be confused with color grading, color correction is the process of squeezing every bit of dynamic range out of your cameras possible to improve the grading process later on. The whole goal of color grading is to achieve what's called the full tonal range of the image. Think of it this way. Say you're taking a picture from the inside to the outside through a window. So what you would normally see is something like this, or like this. Why is that? Well, it's because consumer grade cameras, around the range of $2,000 or less, don't have enough dynamic range to capture enough detail in the shadows and highlights resulting in a very underexposed or highly overexposed image. Now this also happens when you try to grade an image and you push it too far which results in pretty horrendous blowing out of the lighter areas or crushing of the darker ones. So this is where color correction comes in. You can take full control of the dynamic range of your camera and greatly take the stress off of color grading later on in the future. So really, color correction isn't about adding any color at all. Rather, it's about prepping the image for when you do add color in post later on. However, before you even touch your editing software, there are some little in-camera settings that can be tweaked to get the best possible image out of your camera. So what I'm talking about is a flat picture style. So you'll often hear such profiles regarded as undersaturated, dull, or without contrast, but that's what you're doing. You are literally depriving the camera's ability of adding in-camera sharpening, contrast, and saturation, which ultimately will make the color correction process very difficult in post-production. This is vital, especially in cheaper cameras, because they tend to push the image way too far, resulting in a massive headache trying to color correct later on. So how do you shoot flat? Well, most consumer grade cameras have some degree of profile tweaking, all DSLRs do anyway, and it's actually pretty easy to turn down these settings so long as you know where they are. Just to name a few, you should turn the sharpness all the way down, you should turn the contrast all the way down, and you should turn the saturation down to somewhere in between the lowest setting and the mid-range setting. From here, you're ready to shoot flat, which in the end will give you the best possible image to color correct in your editing software. Speaking of which, once you've captured all your footage, you can bring it into your NLE and we're ready to start correcting. Now just for demonstration purposes, I'm only going to be correcting one shot, however you can import as many as you need for your project. So we're now ready to start. Now right off the bat I just want to say that anyone who's working with color, especially professionally, should not rely on their eyes just to judge how an image looks. You should let your video scopes do all the talking. And more specifically, I'm talking about your vector scope and the RGB parade. Now these tools are extremely valuable because they provide all the raw color data about your image. The RGB parade will be used to obtain the full tonal range, while the vector scope can be used to assess things like skin tones. So if you have a very blue picture, then it'll probably look something like this. However, we are going to be using the parade data to accurately correct the image without destroying it. Now one more thing. Throughout this video, I'm going to be referencing what I like to call peak pixels, which simply are the uttermost pixels at the top and bottom of each waveform in the RGB parade. But enough talking, let's get into it. So to color correct your image, you're going to want to navigate to your Lumetri color panel. Now while all of the following is applicable to most non-linear editing softwares, all of the steps that I will be showing in this video will be in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Now once inside Lumetri Color, your first step is to access the RGB Parade. Now by default, the scopes will be positioned in the upper left, which you can leave them there if you want. However, I recommend moving them to the far right hand side so you can view your scopes and operate the levels at the same time. Next, right click on one of the scopes and tick the Parade RGB option to bring up the RGB Parade. Now this can seem very confusing, especially when you see all these individual pixels spread out all over this waveform. However, it makes sense once you understand that each separate group of colored pixels represents the pixel density of that specific color throughout your whole image. Next up, go ahead and import some footage into your timeline and create a new adjustment layer on top of it, which is as simple as right-clicking inside the project box, pressing New Item, and selecting Adjustment Layer. Now once your adjustment layer is in place, add levels, and we're ready to begin correction. Now up in the effects panel, 
Use the black input slider to bring the top peak pixels as far to the top of the parade as they will go without letting them touch. Now the closer you get it here, the better. Now vice versa, go to the white input slider just underneath and do the same thing with the bottom peak pixels, making sure that they just barely touch the bottom. Now you should immediately notice that the image now becomes more rich, more saturated, but what we're ultimately looking for here are true blacks and true whites. Now you can play around with these sliders a little more if you want to obtain your final image, but once you're done, congratulations! You have now fully accessed the complete tonal range of your image. Now I'm not going to go into the vector scope at all in this video because this video is pretty long enough as it is, but if you guys are curious as to how it works, leave me a comment down below and I might just make a part 2 to this video. So anyway guys, this is part 2 of my anamorphic editing series coming to a close. However, I'm not done with this series yet. I've still got tons of information to go over next week in my tutorial on how to do cinematic color grading. Well that's all for this video. If you like this content, check out some of my others. I upload every Friday, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. But with that, my name is Andrew, and until next time, thank you for watching.